Hello, it's Noir Nerd. And in today's vlog, I'm going to do an overview of a quite an interesting project, a side project I've just completed. I think more or less completed anyway recently, which is a 3D COVID visualization tool. So basically, using uh, API from gov.uk, I've taken uh, data, publicly available data from gov.uk using their API and um, I've created a visualization of it with uh, FreeJS. So it, uh, with a drop down for dates, up to 50 dates, 50 dates in the past. So up to 50 days in the past. There is actually 500 possible days, but uh, I didn't want to drop down to 500 days. It's very basic UI wise, but yeah, anyway, I'll just show it. So this is how it looks. So it's like, a, you've got a number of cases, new cases in England, it's in England only. Uh, and you can select a date and then it just creates this sort of grid of images, grid of nodes, which gives you a quick visual um, clue as to how many well, not a clue, it gives you a visual um, reference for how many new cases there's been per day, each day. So, like, I'm looking, I mean, I'm looking at the 25th, you can see it's smaller than, say, it's more clustered around about the 20, 21st. I think it's just an interesting project to do. Um, I want, I try, I want, I've been wanting to do more projects of, like, public APIs and just experimenting with them. So this is just a one, that's quite a dense one. Uh, obviously representing that many um, cases, but having each point represent each would be a lot. So I've divided each case number by a hundred, otherwise it would just be, so each red point um, is equivalent to a hundred um, cases. But it still gives you, I mean, obviously, I think if I, I did actually try and make it so that um, it represented the real number, but it just crashes the computer. It's too much for the, to, the renderer to handle. Uh, even I think if, it, if I had a really good GPU and everything, I think I'd still struggle with that, representing like 40,000 uh, individual points, which would be quite cool, but again, quite uh, undoable, I think. So yeah, that's, that's that. There's the demo. There's I've got it up on GitHub pages, and I guess without further so you can check it out. It's GitHub. slash 3 d hyphen covid hyphen visualization. It's in the most memorable URL, but yeah. Uh, so I've used three different things for this. Really, I've used obviously the um, gov.uk covid API. So where I'm getting the data from. Uh, so just show on screen here. So just using this API for the actual data. I'm using FreeJS for the the graphics. This popular JavaScript library, 3D library, which is very cool. I like it a lot. And also I'm using uh, uh, React. No, not, not React. Sorry, no, Free. Yes. I'm not, I decided not to use React for this because I just, though it is very good, um, it is actually pretty good to use uh, React Free Fiber or something. I just wanted to just use raw, raw React for, the, for this. Sorry, there's a bunch of kids here. I'm looking after them. Uh, okay, I can't camp at the minute, but I'm making noise. It's annoying. But uh, anyway. So let's look at the code. So just put, so I've got a, a README on the the project itself. Uh, it's free JS starter kit that I'm using. Uh, this is just like a get started quick pro, um, template, I guess, for free JS, which is quite useful. And I can build it out into HTML, which is in the distribution folder. But the actual place for my main code, I mean, my structure is a bit strange actually. So, but because uh, I wanted to put it on uh, GitHub pages, I've got the build files in the root, and then also I've got um, the main files in 3D Gallery Explorer main, and then 
There's a readme and main files from source though and index.js. So let's look at the actual code, I'll just get into presentation mode. Get into presentation mode. Okay, so there's quite a lot going on here, and it's it is very rough and ready. I mean, this is very prototypal code. It's very uh, experimental. I've cut some corners here. I've not done everything perfectly, especially when it comes to the actual selecting the drop down and re-rendering. I've just done a gone with a hatchet sort of method of a, smart, a big hammer method for that, which should definitely be improved upon. But anyway, let's just go into this. So we've got my import, importing packages here, got free imported. A lot of this was done already with the free JS start, free JS start kit, so that was useful. Uh, orbital controls is already in there, preloaded, I don't really use it. And then uh, some of this I don't really use, so I don't need to get tied it up eventually, but anyway. So I'm importing my renderer, scene, plus, plus all just free JS stuff. Uh, orbit controls is for the controls of moving around just for shifting on the camera. All this is just stuff that's created, um, was interesting in the template from FreeJS starter kit, so I won't really cover it too much. It's just basically creating the scene, the container and all that sort of thing. It's pretty standard um, FreeJS stuff, so I won't go about it too much really. One thing I did have to do though, I, to get the actual, because there's an on-click event when I, for, registering well, the drop down click events it wasn't working i think it's going to do the orbit controls just to bear this in mind but adding this and this is purely a stack overflow fix seemed to fix it so add the camera render a dom element otherwise if i just left the line in like new orbit controls camera it wouldn't let me click on the drop down box so that might be something just to bear in mind for projects like this i guess and then yeah this is just a bunch of uh dots setting up the lighting Yada, yada, yada. So this is where I started adding my code. So I'm using Axios for the API fetch. So the endpoint is, that's just a comparable, the endpoint data, and then some uh, filters like filtering by England. And then what data we want. Um, and then I just copied this more or less straight from the example, well, with some variation. Well, let's straight from the examples on uh, the uh, API site. So more or less, it's just completely copied from there. So it's a synchronous call and we want to get the uh, this data from the endpoint. And then um, I couldn't figure out exactly how else to do this, but we've got, uh, so we get the data. We've got a synchronous call to get the data the endpoint data, and then I do various things here. So um, I just create some variables for like, this is so I've got quick access to like the length of the data. Uh, I don't really use this, but this is just, I didn't actually use that that much, so it's sort of relevant, but the important ones is like today data, which is the first, so the first result is the in an error index zero. So it's result, data, array index zero, which, and then new cases, which is the data, the data point for just the new cases numbers. And then the date is the same thing, just to get the date for the day. And then just got some console log in there. And then I've, I do create an empty array of called points. And this is where I actually do the graphical stuff. So I actually did this a while ago, so it's sort of not that familiar in my mind, but basically what's going on here is a for loop. Uh, it takes the number of today, the data the cases from today, the new cases for the date, basically. Divides them by 100, because otherwise, like I said before, it would be just a humongous uh, load. If I was like, you're talking 40,000 data points, that's create, so I divided by 100, just to make it manageable. Uh, obviously, if it went up to a certain number, I'd probably have to do some more logic there, but. I just decided to do that for now. Uh, and then it creates some random positioning variables. Um, and then this is where we create the particles. Da, 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 da. Um, to give it a random, random X position, random Y position, random Z position. 
uh, and then just random scale, oh, not random scale, so just a generic scale of five. This can obviously be changed, but I just set it this way. And then we put, seeing out the particles, and then for the points, which have been um, created here, we just push particle position. And then there's a bunch of material stuff here. Uh, set from points, so geometry, buffer geometry, and then uh, set that from here. I mean, this is a lot of this has been done by looking at tutorials. I'm not exactly sure how every single thing of it works, but suffice to say that it works, which is nice. And then I did a bunch of things like uh, so the actual way I create the HTML elements is just in JavaScript because I, did, I was doing it in this index.js. Like I said, it's not all perfect. I don't know if it's perfect, but basically I created a container document, document, doc element, and then I create a new div called cases in this case, and then I, I just add a bunch of styling to that. Absolute black, blah, 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 just the sidebar basically. And then I add some HTML. This is the, just the, the stuff that's on the side and left on side. And then the plunk in today data. And then the select date, and then one important part here is for the drop down. So obviously you can see that I didn't manually put in the options, that'd be insane. So what I do is first I append the cases, um, this div element, I append that to container. And then I get the select date, which is created here, this drop down, and I append a child elements of type option. So I'll just talk a bit about what I did here. This took me a bit to work out. So what I decided I'd just do a maximum of 50. There's 500 possible data points, but I think it would be pushing it to have 500 drop downs. I might change that later on, but so yeah, just create, create element of type option. The value, so the way I did it is I gave you the value to new cases. So this is taking the result data and then it's the index, wherever it is in the loop, and then it's just spitting out new cases information, so it's the number of new cases, and then for the end of HTML, it's just the date. And then uh, I added an event listener. Now this is where I'm sort of not completely sure where everything I'm doing is. I think I'm doing too much repetition here, but I'll, I did it today in about an hour, so I'll just talk about what I did. So I added an event listener from the change for the select, which is here, remember? So get element by the select date. And I'll, this is very important, so I need to clear the canvas every time I'm doing this, because if I don't, then it just adds and adds and adds and adds and adds all the, uh, uh, the graphics, basically. So, also added case count, because I need to change the number on there. And I've got a, um, just a reference to the select date again, probably. Like I said, there's probably too much repetition here, I don't know. Um, and then... So you're selecting that value, you're getting that value from the drop down, the option on the drop down, remember? So I create a variable and get the value from there. And then basically, we just repeat. This changes the content, so it changes the number uh, in the, the number of cases. So I just, this is just getting, going for a loop, go for the length of the case count and then replace it with this, the new, new data. And then this is just basically repeating the same process again. So I've already cleared the canvas. So it does the point generation and then just re-adds it again. So uh, there's a line at the top here, which is important, which is while children, seeing children length is more than zero. That's important because um, if I don't do that, like I said, it just adds and adds and adds and adds and adds more uh, in, uh, graphics. So I just had to Google that. Uh, I don't know if it's a perfect solution. Like I said, uh, this is very prototypal code. Uh, and then there's just a catch for the main results, which is up here. So when you actually fetch the data, if there's an error, it'll give you, spit you an error out back. So this is for the, if there's an error, when that asynchronous call runs, then there should be a catch to catch it. Should work. I think, I think it worked previously. And then this is just a bunch of stuff that was in functions that were written uh, as part of the template that I used. So that's that. Um, just escape presentation mode if I can. So yeah, 
that's that. I think it's quite an interesting thing. It's quite useful in some senses. That's a quick code overview of what's going on there. Um, hope it's interesting. And uh, yeah, you can check out the, the project. It's just live on the uh, using GitHub pages. First time I use GitHub pages, so I'm not that familiar with it. I just sort of decided to try it out because I know it's, it's essentially free, so that's quite good. So yeah, you can check out the, the little app. It's a fun little project for me. And uh, I think that'll do for code overview. If you have any comments or suggestions, improvements, or just general comments, just let me know below. We know our nerd. Uh, like and subscribe if you like this content, of course. And it's fire.